Hey, welcome to Men on Scandal. This is our look at every episode of Scandal from a male perspective. Uh, I'm Tony Scott. In uh, New York City is Mark Clark. In the nation's capital is Troy Johnson. This episode, fellas, is called No More Blood. <laughs> <laughs> we had enough of that last week, I think. Was thank that thank what you, Huck. the FCC said in response <laughs> it to. Might, uh, you know what? It may have been. After it, last week's show? Man, last week was like, eesh, man. But uh, we begin with the with the deal, the exchange, the selling of Olivia Pope to the Iranians. And they're out. Where exactly did they go and do this exchange? Was it in it was it in Iraq or was it in the San Fernando Valley? Which one was it, man? Yeah, somewhere in New Mexico. Yeah. You, you know, you know, it was in America. Yeah. There are too many GMC trucks. <laughs> <laughs> And all the steering wheels were on the left side. We all know yeah. over there that they're on the right. Anyway, yeah. Olivia tells Gus, look, this is an ambush. You know, and he's starting to, he, he's like, wait a minute. Nah, it's not an ambush. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you know, she tells the buyers it's a setup. I didn't even know Olivia Pope was bilingual. She speaks Farsi. Yeah. See, I mean, wow, that was a, you know, I mean, nothing wrong with that. I think being bilingual is great. But it turns out Olivia's plan worked. Well, let's just put a lesson to all you want to be criminals. You need to learn some different languages. That's right. <laughs> if you want to take it to the next level, you must be multilingual. That's right. he had no, <laughs> Gus had nothing coming. He was like, you speak Farsi? Uh, no, I don't. Well, they, said, they said your mama got a dress on. You better run. <laughs> oh, no, we got to go. <laughs> Wait a minute. Unprepared. <laughs> He didn't have anybody in his camp who could interpret except the person who was who he was selling. Yes. That, that was that wasn't very smart. Well, here's another thing. I thought uh, I thought a hostage was supposed to have their mouth bound. <laughs> You're supposed to be quiet. You can't be asking the, asking a hostage question. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about this? You about, about to sell me? Uh, let me break this farce out. You know. I mean, Olivia's like, uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, excuse me, miss. Miss, can, excuse me, Miss. Uh, hold on, hold on a second. Can, uh, can I ask you something? Yeah. That was that was crazy. So, so the the the, uh, the plan worked. Olivia's plan worked, though. You're a hostage, and you're still working your plan. Mm -hmm. That that's incredible. So, that's Abby, why she had that little smile, that look back, like. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, I think I did. I thought I heard. <laughs> when she turned around. She might Abby, have. Abby wants to know what the meeting was about, and Cyrus keeps telling her, "I don't know what you're talking about." I have no, I have no idea what you're talking about, mm. you know, because she wants to know about Olivia, her best friend. By the friend. way, somebody put in the comments, you, they couldn't believe that we didn't think Abby was Olivia's best friend. Which one of y'all said that last week? I did. Abby, okay. Abby's on steroids now. All of a sudden. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fighting for her friend. Let me tell you something. I love you. One way guys. street. Yeah, I love you guys. I wouldn't be fighting like Abby fought for her, for Olivia. <laughs> you you want to endorse the CIA, the damn, you know, <laughs> president's room? I mean, look, Troy needs to. Where's Troy? <laughs> so, <laughs> at least we know where we stand, Tony. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Mark. M Melly breaks it down for Andrew, and she tells him, "Here's the amnesty agreement." And he's like, I ain't signing that. I ain't signing that. But she, she tells him, she says, you know what? You've always been the other guy. You've, you, the also ran, I think she called him. Damn. Good, you're good, fine, but, but never great. <laughs> this is as high as you fly. If you go any higher, you're going to get shot down. I'm thinking, damn. And, of course, he comes back with, you know, no thing, man. Because, you know, I'll tell a reporter what, what kind of freak you are. <laughs> it's like, you know, you like it rough. You like the filthy names. You moan loud. I'll tell the world. Because you will never be president. He said, Man. if I'm not going to be president, you ain't going to be president. Basically. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ouch. crazy, man. I mean, he came back strong. She, she broke out the, uh, what's my man? Uh, <laughs> not Tommy, Tommy, what's his name? The, the, the actor who's always kind of, was always cool. She was like, okay. <laughs> 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 I guess so. All right, so what, Tommy Lee Jones? Tommy Lee Jones? Tommy Lee Jones. Okay. Tommy Lee Jones. okay. She, she let him have that moment because that's the second time he came back on her. She kind of yeah. let it pass. Yeah. Just because she knows it's coming. Yeah. She don't know how it's coming, but she knows it's coming. So yeah. the president is readying his rescue plan for Olivia, and the CIA director says, you know what, I got another plan. Let me explain something to you. If we do this, this, and this, then this, this, and this is going to happen. And if we rescue Olivia, there's only a 30% chance this is going to work. And Fitz is like, Zoe, 
<laughs> so, yeah. so go get her. Let's go. go. Guess what? Go get her. Thirty percent. Well, there's still a chance. Then go get her. Right. Yeah. Cyrus so, is losing his mind while he's hearing all this, too. Man, you know, we're in the Oval Office watching Fitz t tell Cyrus that he thinks that they're underestimating special forces in this rescue of Olivia Pope. And then Cyrus goes in on Fitz. He says, you moron, you child, the finest minds of our government tell you what needs to happen and still. I built you from the ground up. You're all that I have to show for my life. I made you a warrior. I made you a king. I made you a leader of men. And this is what you leave me with. And then Cyrus says, I quit. And then he wakes up from the daydream and goes, excellent points. It's all excellent points. <laughs> I was like, I was like, because when Cyrus was going in, I was going, it's about damn time. It's about time, man. I thought Cyrus was, I thought Cyrus was sitting there with thinking, who is this black shit going in on the president? <laughs> You <laughs> sitting there and think what? But no, yeah. After a minute, I thought, wow, Cyrus. But of course. Man, no, man, no. I was like, oh, man, what happened? A dream. It was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Melly tells Elizabeth North she needs to do something about Andrew. <laughs> you need to do something about Andrew. And Liz is not sure what she can do. And Melly tells her, you know what? I slept with that filthy dirtbag to save your life. <laughs> to save your child's life. Get on that, board, sister. That huck animal grated your back like a piece of cheese. <laughs> so it's time. It's time to pay the piper. Time to pay up, baby. Oh man, her back has been cracked off. <laughs> <laughs> but I keep telling you, man, she keeps acting like it didn't happen. Man. Hi, Hi Melly, how are you? <laughs> I got the back is still on fire. It should be. <laughs> Jeez. There ain't a salve in the world that's going to save that back, man. Goodness gracious. Oh, that, that, I don't care how much stuff happens to Mac and she tastes. That is not. I don't care how much, I don't, I don't care how much her grandmother put mercuricum on her back. Not, she should be looking like Shrek, for real. It should be swollen up like. Man. Damn. Nobody's, no, no patting on the back with her, man. Cause, no. No. Because somebody touches her back, they're going to say, what the hell you got under your blouse? What is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, that, that, that picture of the slave with the, with the lashes <laughs> on his back, he was like, damn, girl. You're back a mess. <laughs> On Black History Month, man. Yeah, man. That's wow. A little homage. A little homage. Oh, okay, I got you. Oh, my goodness. So Huck's ready to get back on the dark side of the net for the auction. And Jake, Jake and Huck have this moment together where Jake is trying, he's trying to explain to Huck that something's wrong with you, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So he tells Huck that everything B613 did to you, they did to me. Yeah. You know? And then Jake tries to take it to another level, which is totally unbelievable. But Jake says, you know, warm blood on your hands feels good, doesn't it? Feels good to me. If you snap a bone in just the right way, it hits you right here. And then if you lick their tears when that happens, oh, man. <laughs> you know? yeah. He says, they warped me, too. But I never let the beast out. And you have to keep your guy in, too, Huck. You know, and, and to me, it's like, I, there's no way I believed that Jake, even though they both went through something similar, with the B613 thing, there's no way that as far as crazy goes, that Jake is on Huck's level. There's just no, because there's not, there's hardly anybody who's on Huck's level of craziness. No. You know, I, I just didn't, I just didn't believe that. Nice attempt to try and, you know, try to reach him. I give him points for that, but I don't think Jake is anywhere near Huck crazy. I don't know, man. I don't know, Tony. I'm going back to last week when, you know, Jake skillfully just took that head off like he was just picking his toenail. <laughs> let, me have the, let me have the knife. Yeah, well. <laughs> like he was doing some brie and, and crackers. <laughs> and Tony, can we forget when he took out... Uh, David and all those people, <laughs> the poor little Asian lady, remember when, when he had oh, a, yeah, when he, like, when he, like seven people, do, 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 and they were just like on the bus stop, like, no, I'm not going to be as crazy as that. Okay, all right, okay, point taken, point taken. Uh, so I, think the, I think the X factor is, uh, 
Jake's getting laid a lot more than Huck is. Well, <laughs> he's got an outlet. Yeah. Right. He's, he, yeah. Lets his, he lets his beast out in his own way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, he's not doing it. Huck doesn't really have much uh, going no. on. No. No. Computer and uh, that bag. Of the bag. The bag, bag of, of torture. The yeah. bag of torture. Uh, yeah, so Qu true. Quinn has her moment with Huck, and she tells him, you know, you might, you may be Liv's puppy, but I'm your puppy. Aww. And if we lose Liv, you can't kill anyone. You can't do that anymore. What you did, you can't do that anymore. You got to promise. And he promises he's not going to do that. And just when he says, I promise, Elizabeth North comes into the OPA offices and says he, she wants to talk to Huck. Can we speak and you won't do anything to me? <laughs> so, you know, it takes a lot of nerve to go and want to have a conversation who yes. did what he did to her. Yes. You yes. know? But she tells Huck about the vice president's amnesty deal. And she offers to pay Huck to do whatever he does mm -hmm. to Andrew. You got free reign and full creative control. Just make him pay. Make him hurt. Mm -hmm. And Huck says, sorry, I, I don't do that anymore. He kept his promise. And he walked away. No more blood. No more blood, right? Hey, the auction is back up again, though. The auction is up for Olivia Pope's life, her being, her services. You can do whatever the hell you want with her if you win the bidding. Fitz tells the CIA director that we need to do, I'm sorry, uh, Cyrus tells the CIA director we need to do what Fitz can't do. You know, and Abby sees them coming out of a meeting, and Cyrus tells Abby that if Olivia is sold, then she's going to have to die. That's it. That's just the right play. That's the right move. We have to do it that way because she knows too much. And no one, no one will survive that kind of torture. So we might as well just put her out of her misery now, I guess is what his point is. Yeah, well, he's also saying that uh, Fitz needs to be president again. Yeah. <clears throat> because because yeah. with us hanging over his head, he's, you know, yeah. he can't do what he needs to do. True. True. All, Very all true. this is making him dance like a monkey at the county fair. <laughs> 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 he's distracted. <laughs> So, uh, so let's see, Huck, Quinn, and Jake are bidding under the name Marie Wallace, Mama Pope's alias. And uh, they bid $1.75 billion. And then she, and then Marie Wallace is outbid. So then they bid $2 billion, and Russia matches that. So the bidding ends in a tie. So what happens when the bidding ends? Is there a super playoff round? Is there a, you know, is, is, is there a, you know, a sudden death playoff bidding? I mean, what goes on there? Well... You know, with these clowns that are running this auction, they're a little too giddy. You know, yeah. unprofessional. Yeah. It's all about the chitch, baby. <laughs> so Gus, Gus asked Olivia, oh, what should they do? Olivia says to take Marie Wallace's bid because she remembers the name Marie Wallace, you know, and, and take Marie Wallace's bid and then demand more money at the drop. And Gus just looking at her and then she takes her poker face down too soon. Because then he sees that look, and he goes, ah, ha! <laughs> he saw that, I'm winning! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that little smirk, like, yeah. I did it again! <laughs> yep, yep. That, like, you know, so Gus, Gus picks the Russians, man. You know? And, and uh, you know, Huck, Quinn, and Jake tell Abby that they lost the bidding. And Abby says Cyrus is going to kill Olivia Pope because they lost. And Abby was about to tell the president what? What was she about to tell the president when Cyrus came in and says, I need you back in the bullpen. You need to dole out those unemployment figures to the media. What was she about to do? What, what was she about to tell him? She was about to tell him that Cyrus has uh, yeah. got his own covert operation going. Yep. Cyrus yep. Is, uh, is, uh, is plotting to kill Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if Cyrus is getting ready, I mean, if, if she was getting ready to tell him that, that she needs to just tell him, don't let the fact that he needs you to hand out some unemployment figures to CNN stop you. You need to tell the president that your right hand is getting ready to kill your girl. <laughs> you don't walk out of the room because it's time to dole out some figures of unemployment. I mean, come on. Right. It was, you, you, you basically were risking your career, you know, imprisonment, your reputation. Hey, go all in. This is I it. Mean, I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you something. I mean, <laughs> She's your best friend, right? Right. Well, I don't know, man. Hey, Huck packs a bag. He packs the bag of torture. Mm -hmm. and, and Quinn reminds him that he promised there'd be no more blood. So we cut to the scene of what Huck's doing. And Huck you has promised, Huck. <laughs> Huck's got Andrew naked and wrapped in plastic. 
Man, I know Andrew regrets all the stuff he did. <laughs> <laughs> he gives the he gives the vice president a shot, knocking him out. C Huck cuts him out of the plastic with Liz in the room, and tells Liz to call nine one one because the vice president collapsed. There's no blood though. There's no blood. I said there'd be no blood, <laughs> and there's no blood. The, all the blood is pooling at his feet. <laughs> Inside his body. Inside his body. And when the ambulance came, they saw the saran wrap around his genitals. They didn't <laughs> ask any questions. What, what's that about? What is going on here? Freaky dinky. <laughs> Cyrus, Cyrus told Fitz that he's all over this, uh, this Olivia Pope rescue. I'm all over this, man. I'll let you know everything. I got my eye on it. I'm going to keep my eye on it for you. Don't worry about anything. I'll give you blow-by-blow blow information. Thanks, wink, wink. You got my back. You got my yeah. back, brother. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> Jake goes to Mama Pope to tell her Olivia is about to be handed over to the Russians. And Mama tells him, you need to go to Prescott Lake in Canada. Why? Because that's where Eli Pope is. Eli Pope is, <laughs> is fishing at Prescott yeah. Lake in Canada. And Jake, Jake tells Eli about Olivia and what has happened. And Eli goes on the outdoor soliloquy. He talks about fishing and he relates that to loyalty and how you can see things. And fishing tells is the truth. It's, it's honest. You can, yeah. you can, it's unpredictable, but at least it's honest. And, you know, this whole thing. And Jake's like, look, she's your daughter. And Eli says, I don't have a daughter. Uh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're back, we're back at the, uh, Wherever Gus and his boys and Olivia are, and they're packing up because they they're got they getting ready to make this deal to sell Olivia for uh, $2 billion, and they're packing up. And the two, the two Gunsels, they're, getting, they're starting to lose their mind. They're starting to taste the money, and Gus tells them, I'll blast you right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's too, much, it's too playful. They're yeah. playing around too much. Yeah. Olivia sees the car keys on the coffee table, and she grabs them. And then when she thinks she can make a run for it, she does. But she got smacked the hell down by Gus. Mm. I mean, man, he put her down like he dropped a sack of potatoes, man. That was brutal. Gus, uh, I think he scoped that. I think he knew. He knows what he's doing. Now, he's not. He's an idiot, but he has moments of clarity. <clears throat> yeah, you know? yeah. And that yeah. was one of them. Like, you know, the last one was, okay, I see you trying to, even though I'm asking you all these questions, I see you yeah. trying to navigate and then this time, he's like, yeah, you want to drive, just to ask. <laughs> you know, and, and may, may, maybe I'm too sensitive, but, m you know, I, I just wish that they would leave out the smacking around of, of, of Olivia Pope, of women, out of the episode. Because it's just, and maybe I'm just too sensitive, the domestic violence thing, because, uh, okay, we lost Mark. Okay, he'll be back in a second. Because, I, I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm being unrealistic. That's fine, too. I understand that. But, but I mean, it's, not, it's a TV show. I get that. But it's just, man. I just, every time, every time she's assaulted, I like, oh God, did they have to do that? You know, because we live in that climate now, and it just makes me cringe. And maybe because I have three daughters. It could be, Tony. You know, just one of, one of those things, man. I mean, she's, she's a hostage. I mean, I, I agree. Nobody wants to see assaults, but okay, yeah. Tony. Okay. I'm just saying, man. Put your big boy pants on. <laughs> it's a Ab TV show. Abby tries to bogart her way into seeing the CIA, CIA director. And the, the guard at the, at the elevator says, uh, no, nah, you, you got an appointment? Yeah. She goes, I'm, I'm the uh, press secretary. He was like, yeah, well, you, you make an appointment then, you know? <laughs> and she tries to go on the elevator anyway. When he says, miss, she turns around. He's, he's pulling out the gun. He's pulling, he's, he's pulling out Roscoe. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Guess I'll make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord. So the, uh, upstairs, though, Cyrus and the CIA director are watching the exchange go down via a satellite. And, uh, you know, they both agree that the asset, Olivia, when she gets exchanged, there at least the CIA director says, when that goes down, we're launching missiles from the Gulf. The minute that happens, everybody's going to die. Yeah. That's, that's the order. Yeah. And just about when the missiles are about to be launched, Cyrus says stop. She says launch. He says no. She says go. He says ho. Stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Now this is based, but this that was Cyrus's plan though. So to, he sabotaged to, his own plan essentially, right? Now I why mean, did, why why did, why would he do that though? I think he probably realized, you know. <laughs> no, I'm uh, killing I'm killing my friend Olivia Pope. Yeah, but he also recognized. The person who was in the, involved in the exchange, right? He knew 
he knew that was a good person, which we'll find out. Yeah. We'll find out why in a moment. But, right, but, right. You know, he had a moment of clarity. Those cameras are off the chain. Man. <laughs> That's how? A, that was a satellite, by the way. He, yeah, yeah. Course, he's, you know, he's like looking. He... Yeah. <laughs> I know that guy. Wait a minute. Hold, you know on. Hold, on. Hold on a second. I know this guy. Hey, that's my man. That's my boy. My man. <laughs> my man. My dog. That's how, I, what? I, I, it's, it's, it's Steven, formerly of, of, of Olivia Pope and Associates. That's right. One of the original gladiators from he season was. one. The gladiator. Yeah. Yeah. So he's there. And when she sees, when Olivia sees that it's Steven, then she knows she's good. That's right. But for a split second, I'm thinking, well, maybe he's gone rogue. <laughs> Is it possible? Anything's possible. It's possible. Two, two billion dollars will make a dude go rogue. I don't know. They, they've been through a lot. I mean, obviously, this connection with Olivia is so strong that people will, you know, whatever their desires and hopes and wishes and good judgment. Yeah, you passed up two billion dollars to help out a friend. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> you know that's rough but as it turns out uh he is on her side yeah. and she takes the gun from his hand and she turns around with expert marksmanship yeah. shoots gus in the knee and he goes down and she walks over and she starts kicking him around like he's a soccer ball <laughs> world star <laughs> <laughs> Be on, uh, that'll be on their website. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, she goes, she starts, boy, she starts just laying in the gus, mm. which it's understandable why, but I mean, Stephen has to pull her away, and then they get in the car and they drive away, and she lives for another day. Cyrus, uh, back at the, in DC, Cyrus tells Abby the president doesn't know that Olivia almost died, you know, and Abby paused for a second because Abby knows. Right. What Cyrus almost did. So I thought she was going to tell him what he once told her, that this makes you my bitch. But, but she didn't say that. I was kind of so, because that long pause, and she had that twinkle in her eye, like, aha, I got you. But she, mm -hmm. she let him off the hook. Yeah. Maybe you know? she'll come back to that. Maybe, maybe she will. Maybe she will. Olivia offers Steve his old job back. We need you back at OPA. Come on back. Yeah. We'll hook it up. Uh, sorry, my, my deal is only for one episode every four years. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, and for a moment, I thought, you know, I kind of thought he was expecting, you know, hey, that just saved your life, man. A little Come on. Extra. You know what I'm saying? A reward. You know, but no, no, he was a, he was a total gentleman. Yes, he was. You know, so uh, she gets on the helicopter and she goes. Meanwhile, back to the VP uh, who Huck put that, gave him a shot. Apparently that shot triggered a, a massive stroke. Mm-hmm. And Melly, go, Melly goes It also through. triggered a gas face, too. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew's face was crazy. <laughs> wow. It's a bad deal I've got. Melly whisper, and then Melly whispers in his ear, you brought this on yourself. Mm. He's probably saying, do I, I already know this. Do I need you in the room? I don't need you right now. All right. I if need I, a miracle. If only my lips could work, I, I had a lot to say. Yes. I'm paralyzed. Man. So Olivia is with the CIA director. Olivia's being debriefed. That's not the first time she's been debriefed. No, it's first time she's been debriefed in this manner, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and after she's debriefed, and she kind of got shook up for a second. That glass of water shook her up because it brought her a flashback to when she was captive. Yeah. And she asked for that glass of water and it kind of like shook her up a bit, but she got through it. And then it's over, and the gladiators take Olivia Pope back to her apartment. Why would they take her back to her? That first night back, you take her back to where she got grabbed? Hey, man, they got to get that stain out of that, that couch. But, I mean, man, put her in a, in, in a hotel or something the first night. Don't take her back to the apartment. Yeah. I, I, the scene, the and, scene and then, where your life leave, became a living hell? You take her back there where it started? And leave her there. And leave her there. See you alone. Tomorrow. Yeah. I want to. I just want to sleep. I, I Lock, just put all these locks together. <laughs> yeah. The security system will be activated tomorrow. You all know? right, bye bye. Yeah, and that's it. Come on, <laughs> come 
on, man. <laughs> and then Huck, Huck tells her, I was pretty sure if somebody hacked you to pieces and burned your body, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> Huck, Huck is a nut. Yes, Huck is. Is an, and the minute he leaves, I mean, there's like two seconds go by, and then there's a knock at the door, and it's Fitz, the president of the United States. What, was he waiting around the corner? On, on, you know, uh, was he in a corridor waiting? I mean, that just happened so fast. How did they not pass each other in the hall? And my point exactly. Right. How did that not happen? Jake, how you doing? <clears throat> <laughs> did, Fitz comes calling. Uh, did they hurt you? Did they hurt you? She goes, I wasn't raped. And then uh, she says, guess what I learned? There are worse things than rape. Mm. And then they talk about what they've done for each other. Who's done more for the other? Okay. You know? And I got to thinking about, okay, now who has done more for the other? Let's see. He, she, she rigged an election for him. She became his mistress for him. What else has she done? She, got, she went through this living hell. That wasn't necessarily for him, right. but she, at the, the uh, there was some scandal. This little scandal he had. Yeah, you know yeah. she's she's worked she's worked on things that have it have kept him weathering the storm. Right. So he could stay in office. Right. 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 So she's kept him in office through many storms. Yeah. What has he done for her? He went to war for her. That kind of trumps everything in a sense, doesn't it? I mean, he went one, to war. One would think. Yeah. You know. And she and she says you 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 had people you sent people in a harm's way people died for me because because you and it like, it almost comes off like you ungrateful little you know right. thing, you know right. maybe maybe that's the man in me I don't know but to me him going to war and putting all these and it wasn't his life but putting all these lives on the line for her kind of trumps everything she's done for him just uh, just you know. Maybe no. I think. Well, look. I think he. You know. I mean, he's blinded by his love and 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 caring in his own. You know, crazy. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying it's sane. It's not. It's not a moment of sanity. Right. But when it comes to her, he's going to do everything he can. Right. To make sure that she's safe, including, right. including going to war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, to me, I was like, man, you can't please, you can't please a woman, man. You just can't please a woman. That's like, come on, man. It was a war. I yeah. mean, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what the deal was well, on that. She, she, she was saying, basically, that's exactly what you were not supposed to be doing. Right. But he did it because, anyway. Because you're supposed to be better than that. Yeah. We, <laughs> ironically, but, we rigged all these elections. We did all these these uh, dirty tricks and things behind your back so you could stay basically she was basically saying you're the one who's supposed to be wearing the white coat not yeah. me right right I don't I mean that's, that's it's just like I don't know that's they're, they're, they're never going to get past any of these issues he could he could write out his presidency with no more drama right, right? he could divorce Melly and they still ain't going to be together and he won't divorce Melly because she wants to be the president, right. so he gets to be the first gentleman, so he gets to stay in the game. Right. Or so, does he Does he want to, I don't know if he wants to stay in the game as much as he wants Melly to do, you know, what he believes that she should, she's capable of doing. She wants to be president, she's capable, um, and he, he doesn't want to mess that up for her. That doesn't mean he doesn't want to be in Vermont, and, you know. But that'll never happen. It's just, it's just too much is going on, man. There's just too much, too much has just happened. That's just not, and it, it, there'll always be something pulling them apart. Whether it's Eli Pope, whether it's Mama Pope, whether it's Jake Ballard, it's going to be something that are always going to keep them apart. It's just, it's just, it, to me, it's just, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, man. Yeah, no. I mean, well, you know, everything, this is, this is the way the cycle, you know, yeah. with them goes. There's something that draws them together. Right. This time it was saving her life, and ultimately it's the same thing that pulls them apart. Because right. she's pissed off about how it went down. Sure, yeah. And he's confused, so he's going to go and be in the corner. Like, the hell? Like you said, <laughs> I'm grateful. Yeah, yeah. I'm grateful much? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. So what did I miss, man? I know I missed something. Uh, you missed uh, you missed uh, the, the, the low-down line of the night when Abby was talking about uh, the Steven situation with Cyrus. Which, uh, which I felt like Abby orchestrated the situation. 
Well, she's she the one contacting Interpol yeah. and Stephen and all that. So she, yeah. basically, she basically is the one who saved Olivia Pope. Exactly. And then, you know, she said, you know, he, Cyrus knew who, who Stephen was. Uh, but, she, but he was trying to figure out the connection. And she said, once a gladiator, always a gladiator. Right. He said, yeah. what's, he said what's a gladiator? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, he's not, been, he's not been out of the loop. Yeah, well, you know. Well, so they brought Stephen back for one episode. So are we going to see Harrison, man? Uh, no. We, we won't see Harrison at all? Cliffhanger, no. end of the season, nothing? You, you, if they go to the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> that, no. That's it, man. That's it, huh? Okay. Yes. All right. Well. Or one out for the homie. Well, there you go. So that's the episode. No more blood. Uh, if you could give it a uh, thumbs up. That thumbs up button right there, give it a thumbs up, man. You can subscribe to the channel. That would be great. Also, don't forget that there is going to be the uh, the Gladiator Convention. Gladiators right. Unite going on in Washington, D.C. What's a gladiator? What's a gladiator? It's going to be going on uh, this summer, and uh, we'll get you more details on that. But make your plans to join us uh, for that. It's going to be an incredible uh, weekend of events going on, so that, that'll be great. So uh, We also have some other shows that we do. We do Men on Everything, where Mark and Troy and myself talk about the biggest stories that are going on at that time. Uh, we also do a show called uh, iTony Tech, where I talk about tech news for non-geeks, something that everybody can understand. And you know what, Tony's iTech is, yeah, that, that's really... That may be the, the jewel in the crown, Tony. You think so? And yeah, because because folks need that kind of information. It's concise. It's on point. It's You can watch one of Tony's eye techs and then go to your phone and hook it up, and you're, you're good to go. You <laughs> learn something that quick. Well, yeah. It, it, it's amazing. It is. No, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Money's coming to your PayPal account. <laughs> when, I get, when I get it, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's kind of like a line I kind of borrowed from the late Telly Savalas in real life, man. Because, you know, Telly, Telly would have money problems and he didn't have money problems. T Telly used to say, hey, when I got it, baby, everybody's got it. Damn. That's how he was. He spread the love like that, man. Wow. So, well, hey, so when, I, so when I got it, everybody. So when I got it, you got it, man. I just, I ain't, got, I just ain't got it right now. <laughs> well, I feel good about this. You got more hair than Telly Savalas. So. <laughs> well, there you go. Maybe there's a chance. There you go. There you go. And look who's back just in time as just we wrap time. up over here. Mark Clark is rejoining us. Hopefully in a second he's rendering, giving a chance for him to say bye-bye. So <laughs> is, he, is he there? I can hear him. I can't see him. You're, oh, as they go. say, you're rendering. There you are. Yeah. What happened, man? The, the battery went down, man? The battery wore down? Something, man? What happened, man? No, yeah, but yeah, my computer, I told you, you know how this computer do it. It started to update or something and just dropped out. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Why would it do that? I'm working. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. But uh, we, we we wrapped up, man, and uh, awesome. fi finished the episode, man. So, so I asked Troy, do you think Harrison, since Stephen came back for that one episode, will we see Harrison this season or any season moving forward if people are coming back? Yes. You think, because Troy said no. I think we might see Harrison. I think the, it's kind of a, it's, I think, you know, I think that was a, a giving some love to the longtime gladiators. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that uh, if you took the temperature, you wouldn't mind seeing Harrison in an episode or two. Mm -hmm. oh, man, it's not that anybody doesn't want to see him. He's fired. He will not see him. <laughs> I think it's our family, man. Once a gladiator, you know the rule. Once a gladiator, always a gladiator. And well, they said and that in the episode, missed, right? They, they said that in the episode, but you missed me saying that even Cyrus said, what's a gladiator? <laughs> <laughs> so once you're fired, I'm sure that's probably the same. <laughs> you're dead to me. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> What, what, what are we going to see from Eli Pope moving forward, though? What do you think is going to happen there? He's, can, he's not going to be on Prescott Lake forever fishing. He's going to have a fishing, yeah. fishing show. Right. He's going to, he's going to have a fishing show with long soliloquies with the, with the fish. Show. <laughs> with the fish. And the fish is going to be like, for the love of God, someone stick a hook in me and yank me out of this water and fry me up. I don't understand a damn thing Eli says, but I tell you what, he can find the biggest bass in this damn lake. <laughs> How do you how do you have a hillbilly accent in Canada, man? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all abuted. Yeah, oh, well, so. <laughs> 
So that's the episode of No More Blood. Again, uh, sharing, subscribing, that kind of stuff. It helps a lot. It helps us uh, grow the channel, as they say. So uh, thanks again for watching. For Troy Johnson in Washington, D.C., Mark Clark in New York City, I'm Tony Scott in St. Louis, and we'll see you soon.